people are familiar <laughs> with that they, they have serious questions about. I, I think a lot of them just don't understand how little <laughs> legal protection yes. or laws are out there at all, and they're very surprised yeah. when yeah. they find that out. Yeah, it is surprising. It was surprising to me. And it, it, it almost feels like a gender gap, you know, the, whenever we talk to kids, Kids, you know, young Americans, <laughs> young <Yeah>. adults, <laughs> younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, you always sort of get this sense of, well, yeah, of course you should have equal mm. protection under the law. It just seems normal. Yeah. And yet somehow every time it goes before all the folks who are in authority positions and mm -hmm. leadership positions, it's always either a close vote or it's not. It just it's nowhere near passing. Yeah, yeah, I think the younger generations coming up have this, they, they have the idea that there should be equal protections yes. and equal rights. And I think a lot of times they're just really surprised that there isn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys know, you know, my home state is Florida, <laughs> which is the, one of the not progressive <laughs> states. And I've, I've shared a lot of stories with them about, about people in the state of Florida that have had a lot of legal troubles. And they sometimes just can't believe yeah. The issues that are out there that just aren't really dealt with at all. Yeah. 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 Actually, one of the stories that I had here was from Tampa. Mm -hmm. it was, this is about um, Tampa, Florida. Uh, Tampa, Florida's transgender population stands to receive anti-discrimination protections under a measure given preliminary approval by the city council. Oh, wow. This would have been four or five weeks ago. Mm -hmm. But Christian groups are now mobilizing to block these rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this ordinance, they, 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 they go into all kinds of uh, defamatory speech in order to scare people mm -hmm. sure. into equating us with sexual predators. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's uh, one, of the, one of the more famous cases in the past couple of years was of uh, Susan Stanton in Lakeland, who was one of the county officers mm -hmm. that was going through... Um, her transition mm -hmm. and lost her job in that process. Right. And so that was, I think, it really came into the came into the light then it was in the in the news a lot and and I think people then started to think about it more anyway. sure yeah. yeah it's it's a big deal mm -hmm. it's a big deal when you start to realize that there's you know little protection against your landlord kicking you out mm -hmm. yeah. you know or against uh, a company refusing services to you mm -hmm. you know or your employer firing you yeah it, which is scary to think about cuz you I mean your average person doesn't go to work or go into a business and have to wonder if that will happen to them and i that's think right. that's that's one of the things that's very shocking to the students in the class is they've never had to worry about yeah. those things they most of them until they've taken the class have never really thought about their gender identity <laughs> or where it comes from or why they do the things that they do it's it's yeah. it's kind of interesting i've heard it talked about that um We've had enough time go by since sort of the, the, the golden age of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. that a lot of people now that are growing up aren't really familiar with the civil rights movement, not in that mm -hmm. personal way. Mm -hmm. And so things like this do seem very foreign and shocking when they hear yeah. about them. And it's like, you know, you know this you know, personal liberty is something that we have to continue to work towards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, it's true. It's true. And, and, and um, yeah, I think we've we've sort of gotten to a point where where <coughs> sorry, where it's easy to sort of assume that everybody has rights mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. we're all protected. And guess what? You know, surprise, we're <laughs> not. Well, and, and in much the same way, the fact that there is a course about media and gender, mm -hmm. you know, or um, gender and communications that, that um, men and women in this country, just on basic gender lines, are still not treated equally. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, socially Absolutely. Or, you know, so yeah, there's, there's still definitely a need for it. There's still definitely a need for a women's movement. There's still definitely mm -hmm. a need for a civil rights movement. Yeah, that's that's one of the topics we address. It's a it's a very discussion based course. So we <laughs> we spend we spend a good amount of time every week just kind of talking about these issues, and that's one of the things we get to is a, a lot of the classes like, well, that's not an issue anymore. There's right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> men and women are equal today, and when when Up you here. Look, with, with the exception of pay. 
<laughs> yes, uh, with the exception of pay and so many other things, even if you just look at the norms for how people communicate with each other, if you go into an office setting mm -hmm. or an academic setting, the norms for behaving in that setting are masculine norms. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be a successful woman in those settings, you really do have to kind of adapt to the yes. masculine norms, and that's not an option. If you don't, you, you simply don't receive the same kind of success. Yeah. It, it's one of the things that's been interesting in, in, in our scenario with transition mm -hmm. is, mm. you know, being in, um, being in, in, in IT, in computers, mm -hmm. you know, working at a um, defense contractor <laughs> <laughs> of all places, um, seeing how my, my peers interacted with me, and I don't want to say treat because I don't think anyone's doing it intentionally, mm -hmm. but seeing how they interacted with me for the last eight or nine years, and then in the, in the last year, year and a few months since my transition at work, you can see changes mm -hmm. in the way people interact with you, the way people treat you. Yeah. It's really interesting. That's very true. Yeah. Which is a, is, is a double-edged sword because it's a very positive thing that they're starting to see me as female. Mm -hmm. right? And then, of course, on the negative side, it's like, yeah, I have to raise the issue three times to get heard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting position to be in because when, as we're learning about this, I always encourage my students to try to break the norms for their gender just to kind of see what the responses they get. This is one of their assignments about midway through the semester is they have to take whatever the communication norms for their gender are and do the opposite. And uh, they write about the responses they get to this. And, and uh, a lot of them don't realize just how implicit those behaviors are. Right. We learn them from the time we're born. And, yes. and in transitioning, you kind of get the unique experience of seeing it from both sides of the line. Yeah. So certainly, you, you, you feel what society expects of you mm -hmm. in, in, in both, on both sides. Yeah. yeah. It is a very, very different <laughs> expectation. Yeah. And, and it's, been, it's been interesting, too, because I can look back and I can, can say, while I always considered myself more aware of those things than maybe the average person out mm -hmm. there, I can look back and I can see where I was guilty of it, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's, absolutely. It's, it's very interesting because, obviously, be, being that we're in transition, everything changes. You, it's easy to see change. When things don't change, you sort of get used to them and you, you can, well, I suppose you adapt and just see things as normal. And, and uh, so we, we actually are certainly more attuned mm -hmm. to that kind of thing and being that people's behavior changes, mm -hmm. um, which is, is very interesting. Uh, one of my coworkers had said to me before I transitioned, um, <clears throat> this is several years back, God, four years back or so, she said, um, you know, when I told her, I mean, she was a sweetheart, and she was sort of kidding when she said this. But but she said to me, um, "Why do you want to do that? They're gonna they're gonna cut your pay and treat you like a secretary." <laughs> and she was right. Yeah, yeah. it's so so right. true. But like I said, you know, the woman always makes less than the mm -hmm. male does. So. Yeah, and you yeah. receive, like you said, people people listen to the way you talk in a very different way at yeah, that yeah. point. Um, just in academics being a professor, uh, talking to my male colleagues, the way that students come into the office and speak with them is entirely different than the way they come in and speak to me. And uh, it, it's really interesting to see that with my male office mates, how their students <laughs> come in and talk to them. And it's always very different. And that's yeah. not to say that different is always negative or that, mm -hmm. that, that different is always putting the way women uh, are interacted with behind men. Mm -hmm. and, because and in a way, I, I almost like the way they interact with me better because it, it does seem to be uh, a little bit less 